Welcome to the Wisconsin Science Museum virtual tour. The museum is at 2300 South Park Street, Madison, Wisconsin. It is on the lower level of a strip mall called the Village on Park. There is a large parking lot that serves the Village on Park and the Goodman South Madison Library. You enter the atrium and take the elevator on the left or the stairs straight ahead to the lower lobby. The museum entrance is to the left as you exit the elevator. From the foot of the stairs, you turn right and right again to the double doors beside the stairs. The entry hall leads from the lower lobby to the museum. Since it is shared with the building management and other tenants, it is not part of the museum, but we have several banners and posters displayed here. The large banner introduces our homegrown discoveries theme. Museum exhibits are designed to inspire interest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. We celebrate the achievements of people working in Wisconsin or educated here. A few relevant STEAM discoveries are highlighted. We also have some posters related to the Science Museum STEM Hall of Fame. Three photo matrix posters identify most of the approximately 64 initial members. There is sufficient space in the entry hall to accommodate some event activity tables. The University of Wisconsin Space Place exit doors face the Science Museum entrance. This is the view from the entrance. Behind the reception desk is a large screen TV that displays short summaries of the achievements of many of our Hall of Fame members. The picture on the table is John Bardeen, the Wisconsin-born and educated inventor of the transistor. The picture is a mosaic of electronic components. In 1890, Stephen Moulton Babcock invented a simple and reliable test for butterfat in milk. The Babcock test allowed farmers to test milk on the farm. That improved the operation of the milk market and allowed farmers to evaluate and improve their herds. The Babcock test won numerous awards around the world, including grand prizes at the 1900 Paris Exposition and at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. The Babcock exhibit includes examples of centrifuges developed by Babcock and other apparatus used for the Babcock test. This is the colorimetry exhibit. Chemical colorimetry is the accurate determination of the color of a chemical solution to determine the concentration of a specific chemical content. The litmus test for determining acidity is an early, well-known colorimetry test. Colorimetry has long been used to measure blood glucose. Many other colorimetry tests have been developed. This exhibit includes colorimeters that illustrate the development of colorimetry over time. There are also instruments for spectroscopy and polarimetry. The UW On Display exhibit contains items on loan from various departments and museums on the UW-Madison campus. There are some geological and fossil specimens from the UW Geology Museum. There are also castings of the skeletal remains of a Homo naledi person provided by the UW Anthropology Department. The microscopy display includes a variety of optical microscopes and a poster on the history of microscopy. 
The microscope seen here belonged to UW Madison Nobel laureate Howard Temin. Here is a nice little brass field microscope kit. This is a simple microscope used for dissecting. There are several microscopes that can be used by visitors to examine specimens that we have available for viewing. There are several balances of various types in the museum weighing exhibit. The one shown here belonged to Stephen Babcock. The nanotechnology poster exhibit introduces the viewer to the concept of studying and manipulating materials at the nanometer scale. Nanotechnology tools, techniques, benefits, and applications are presented. Visitors can manipulate and feel several parts of the exhibit. The shoe fitting fluoroscope is a non medical use of medical imaging technology. Shoe fitting fluoroscopes like this one, made in Milwaukee by the Adrian Company, were used in many stores from the 1920s until the early 1950s. After that, use declined due to the increasing awareness of the health risk of radiation exposure. The customer stood on the step with the toes of his shoes sticking into the rectangular opening. An x-ray tube below the feet projected a beam through the shoes and feet to produce a live image on a screen above the feet. The customer and salesperson viewed the image through openings at the top of the box. The display includes a simulation of operation. Tomotherapy is a system for providing radiation treatment for cancer. Radiation is precisely focused and directed to apply radiation to the cancerous tumor while minimizing radiation exposure of healthy tissue. The treatment machine is similar to a CT X-ray machine. The equipment in the donut-shaped housing rotates around the patient. As the equipment rotates, the patient is moved through the center of the machine on a motorized table. The museum display includes the outer housing of the machine and several of the key internal components. A screen shows a presentation explaining the machine. The anatomy table is a large touchscreen display that is an anatomy teaching aid. The viewer can examine the human or canine skeletal, circulatory, nervous, muscular, and other systems individually and in any combination. On-screen touch motions control the size and angle of view. The infinity box is an optical illusion. There are several strings of lights attached to the sides of the box. When you look into the infinity box, you see multiple reflections of squares of light. There is a mirror at the back of the box that reflects an image of the lights. The inside surface of the glass covering the front opening reflects the image back to the mirror, but does not prevent the viewer from seeing the reflection. As a result, you see a second reflection that appears to be a square group of lights inside the first square. The reflections continue to be repeated until they become too dim to see. In the diffraction grating kaleidoscope, the viewer sees rainbow patterns reflected from a flashlight pointed in from above. The top surface contains two sheets of film that appear to be transparent but actually have a grid pattern of very fine lines. The lines break up the light to show the colors of the rainbow. Turning the top grid causes the pattern to change. Motion activated screens in the laser exhibit tell about lasers and laser power and safety. A poster shows some uses of lasers. In the first unit, Laser beams of various power levels are aimed at a wax material that absorbs the light and dissipates the laser energy. Visitors activate the lasers by pushing buttons. The second unit is a transversely excited atmospheric laser 
or T-laser. It generates a laser beam by exciting room air with a spark that jumps between two high voltage electrodes. Sparks will be seen along the horizontal copper rods in the center of the picture. The laser beam will strike the small green square on the left. Visitors push buttons to activate a plasma ball and a plasma tube in the plasma exhibit. Touching the plasma ball and tube influences the plasma streamers. A poster explains what plasma is, describes the natural occurrence of plasma, and shows some examples of plasma use. The Kelly Apparat invented in 1830 by Justice von Liebig, was the first piece of complex glassware that was designed and constructed by a chemist for one specific laboratory procedure. Chemists had some general purpose glassware available, but more complex chemistry apparatus was difficult and expensive to obtain. Liebig decided to learn how to make his own glassware and recommended that other chemists do the same. That practice continued into the 20th century, but laboratory glassblowing grew to be a profession. Tracy Dreyer, master glassblower in the UW-Madison Chemistry Department, is shown here making a Cali apparat. He donated one for exhibit in the museum's science and glass exhibit. When Norman Irway was working towards his Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, he took a glassblowing course and became quite proficient in scientific glassblowing. Upon graduation in 1944, he was hired as a glassblower for the Manhattan Project at the University of Chicago. When that project was finished, he went to graduate school at UW-Madison. Fellow graduate students often asked him to make glassware for their research projects. That prompted him and his wife Wilma to start a scientific glassblowing business in Oregon, Wisconsin. This picture shows Norman Willie Irway at work in their glassblowing shop. Items donated to the museum by the Irway family are now on the museum's Science in Glass exhibit. This is the original sample case that has been restored, rearranged, and relabeled. Here is a display of glass blowing tools. The Wisconsin Science Museum offers visitors the opportunity to participate in a variety of science activities. Check out our website at wiscimuseum.org. Thank you for watching.